Is a Multipoo the right dog for you? We'll keep watching to find out. Hello, I'm Julia and this is Roscoe the Multipoo. The way this video works is simple. I'm gonna ask you 10 questions and you're gonna keep track of how many times you answer yes and no. As I go along, I'll explain how each question relates to the Multipoo and hopefully you'll get a good idea of whether the Multipoo fits into your lifestyle. Are you cold? You keep shivering. So let's jump right into the first question. Question one, do you want a dog that likes to snuggle in your lap? If you could didn't tell already by this little snuggle bunny, multi-poos are great lap dogs. Roscoe loves sleeping on our lap and he likes getting carried around as well. If I'm on the couch reading a book and I just want some company, Roscoe's always there to jump up on my lap and snuggle with me. He's so warm and fuzzy and the perfect size to fit in my lap. Question two, are you home more than you're away? Multi-poos are very social dogs and they tend to have separation anxiety, meaning they hate being separated from their owners for too long. If you travel a lot or have a work schedule where you have to work long hours each day away from home and there's no one to stay home with your dog, chances are your multi-poo might get lonely. If this is your situation and you have your heart set on a multi-poo, you could always look into doggy take care, but that does mean extra costs. We've definitely seen separation anxiety in Roscoe. When he was a puppy, we could never leave him alone because he'd cry and bark whenever we left the house. Even now, he occasionally whines if my dad goes outside to, I don't know, wash the car or take the garbage out. Roscoe's so attached to us, and whenever we come home, we always get a very enthusiastic greeting. Thankfully, we were able to help Roscoe's separation anxiety with positive reinforcement, and now he can stay home up to six hours, sometimes a little more. Usually when he's home, he'll just nap, and he's perfectly fine with it now. If you'd like a video on how we were able to help Roscoe's separation anxiety, leave a comment down below to let me know. Question three, do you want your house free of dog hair? So because these little guys are a mix of Maltese and Poodle, they don't shed and you won't have to vacuum dog hair. This was actually one of the main reasons we decided on a Poodle mix. Not having dog hair stuck to your clothes constantly or all over the place is really nice. Last I checked, multi-poos are considered hypoallergenic, but this might depend on how severe your allergies are, so I'd suggest spending time with a multi-poo before bringing one home. This way you can see if you have any symptoms or not. None of my family is allergic, so I'm not able to say for sure. Question four, are you prepared to spend thousands of dollars on a dog? This might surprise you, but unfortunately, multi-poos cost a lot of money. Typically, prices range between $800 and $2,000, but I've received comments before from people in different countries other than the US where they say that multi-poos cost up to $5,000 where they live. So I guess it just depends on the breeders around you and where you're located. Question five, are you okay with a dog that needs grooming? So because multi-poos are non-shedding and have hair instead of fur, their hair keeps on growing, so you'll have to give them haircuts. I'm gonna insert a video of when Roscoe's hair grew super long. You probably won't even be able to recognize him. This doesn't mean you necessarily have to take your dog to the groomer. You could do it yourself. We've tried both ways. My dad is the groomer in the house. On particular places like Roscoe's paws and his tail, it's really difficult for my dog. My dog. Where even was I? We find that by taking him to an actual groomer and having him get shaved from time to time helps to prevent gnats. Because before we were letting his hair grow way too long and it just got all tangly. In addition to taking Roscoe to the groomer, we also have to brush him regularly. I'm gonna be totally honest, this is one of the things I forget to do all the time and it leads to him getting mats. It only takes five minutes because I mean, there's not much surface area to cover, but for some reason I can never remember to do it. We also give Roscoe baths once every two weeks. You might think this is a lot, but because because Roscoe's a white dog and he gets all muddy, we like to give him baths to keep him clean. We just prefer to have a nice smelling dog. Ah, <sighs> coconut. Question six, do you want a small dog? You guessed it. Multi-poos are small. Roscoe is just under a foot tall and weighs nearly eight pounds. This will depend on whether or not the poodle parent of your multi-poo is a miniature or a toy. In case you're wondering, a miniature is bigger than a toy. Roscoe's mom was a toy poodle, so this means that he might be a little smaller than some other multi-poos. Typically, your multi-poo will probably weigh anywhere from five to 20 pounds. Question seven, if you have kids, are they older than six? I know in the past I've said multi-poos are great family dogs, and I still believe that to be true, so don't misunderstand me. All I'm saying is that if you have kids under six, there's a few things to consider before getting a multi-poo. We got Roscoe when my brother was five years old, and for the most part, they've been great together. But there have been a few times when my brother has stepped on Roscoe's paw, and Roscoe will generally react by coming from my brother's foot, not necessarily an aggressive way, but it's just how he reacts to it. Roscoe's never bitten my brother, but he has managed to startle him quite a few times. 
times. So if you have a toddler who's prone to get in your dog's face, a multi-poo is probably more likely to ever nip than let's say a golden retriever who's known to do really well with kids. Multi-poos are small and fragile, especially as puppies, so there's more of a risk of them getting hurt around small children. By teaching your toddler to be gentle around a multi-poo and by training your multi-poo how to leave it, you should be able to avoid any nipping behavior. Before we move on to the eighth question, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give this video a paw up to help it to spread to more people and to let me know if you're enjoying it so far. <sighs> question eight, do you mind an ineffective guard dog? Okay, 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 I know people disagree with me about this one. If you've seen my five reasons not to get a multi-poo video, then you'd know that one of the reasons I said was because multi-poos aren't guard dogs. I found it hilarious how many comments I got from my audience saying that their multi-poo is a guard dog. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to clarify what I meant. So from our experience, yes, Roscoe reacts to noises and things moving outside. Like if the mailman comes to the door, if he sees a squirrel running around outside. I doubt that if a burglar was intruding that this little fluff ball compared to let's say a Rottweiler would manage to scare him off. <coughs> okay be honest if you were in a real situation of danger out of all the dogs you could pick would you pick this dog to protect you? Feel free to let me know if you think your multi-poo is fierce enough to scare off an intruder. But if you're simply looking for a dog that can alert you to any potential danger, a multi-poo will do just fine. I'm telling you, Roscoe can see just about anything out of the corner of his eye. I'll be in a Spanish class and he's out there barking at a leaf that's falling from the sky. Okay, question nine. Are you willing to put in extra effort to socialize your dog? You might be wondering why I included this question. Don't all dogs need to be socialized? Yes, all dogs do need to be socialized, but I think it's especially true for these little guys. Because of COVID, we weren't able to socialize Roscoe as much as we'd hoped, and so he ended up like one of those stereotypical little dogs who barks and lunges at other dogs. So from my family's experience, if you don't take that extra time when your multi-poo is a puppy to socialize him, he'll let likely turn into one of those reactive little dogs. Oh, my hand. Who knew that holding up an eight pound dog could take so much arm strength? Why don't I just hold you like this? can prop up on my arm. If your heart is set on having a well-behaved multi-poo, you're going to have to put the effort in to socialize him. And if you're not willing to do that, maybe a multi-poo is not the best dog for you. I'm no dog behavior expert, so I don't know if what people refer to as small dog syndrome is actually a thing or not. From both our experience with Roscoe and what I've researched, I think that it has mainly to do with the owner's behavior and whether they're training and socializing their dog. But in the video where I talked to a real dog trainer about Roscoe's behavior, she did say that because Roscoe's Small, he might have try to have that bigger presence to say back off to a dog that's coming close to him. Question 10, do you want a highly intelligent dog? Now I'd be very surprised if you answered no. Who doesn't want a highly intelligent dog? Roscoe learned nearly 20 commands by the time he was five months old. Poodles are known to be smart and we definitely see that poodle coming through Roscoe when we're training him. Whenever he's learning a new command, he catches on so fast. So if you're first time dog owners like my family and you're looking for a dog that's easy to train, I'd highly recommend a multi-poo. So now for the big question, is the multi-poo right for you? Well, if the majority of your answers were yes, I'd say that a multi-poo is a pretty good fit for you. If you tally up your answers and find you answered no the majority of the time, then maybe keep looking around for a different breed. If you haven't seen my videos about the pros and cons of getting a multi-poo, I'd highly recommend you go check them out next. Thank you so much for watching, and Roscoe and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> okay, Roscoe, let's wave to the camera. Bye. Okay. Roll over. Yep, you can roll over. You can do it. Roll over. Almost. Roll over. No, down. Roll over. <laughs>